Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the sister or brother of the soil moisture sensor of the PLT-1 from Apollo Automations that we reviewed recently. The main difference here is that this is not a mains powered unit, but instead is battery powered, hence allowing for hopefully much greater flexibility in where you can use the device. In this video, we'll take you through the features, look at the components of the sensor, integrate it into Home Assistant, compare its performance against similar devices, and then give you a recommendation as to who should consider this device. So let's get the sprinklers primed and ready to see what the PLT-1-B is all about. The PLT-1 Ultimate Plant Sensor comes in two variants, the non-battery version or the USB version, which is the one we reviewed previously, and this, the battery version, which we are looking at today. The first thing you're going to notice about the PLT-1 battery is it's not a small unit. You get the same 90mm probe with 80mm that can be inserted into the soil and is made of the same conformal coating, ensuring longevity and resistance to environmental factors. The electronics compartment is 38mm tall, 81mm wide and 30mm deep with half of this internal space taken up by the 18650 rechargeable lithium battery, which is not included, but are readily available. And Apollo even give you a link to where you can purchase them from. The 18650 is claimed to provide six months of battery life when used with the standard settings for reporting and sleep. More on that later. The sensors available go with the PLT-1 battery are the same as the USB version. So you get the soil moisture, a light sensor for lux levels, a UV index rating to check if your plant is getting a tan, the air temperature and humidity, and if used in conjunction with the optional soil probe, you get the soil temperature. This probe can be either the short version of a 20 centimeters or the long version of 1.5 meters if you want deeper or further away from the sensor. Then you get the great option of an RGB LED and a pizza buzzer that you can trigger for alarms, a super helpful feature. The electronics case is made of green ABS plastic, so literally disappears into the foliage. Now the unit does have a USB socket, so you can mains power the unit if you prefer, but unfortunately the unit is not waterproof, so don't expect this to be an outside moisture sensor. For that, I would still recommend the EcoWit WH51. Check out that video in the pop-up above. Since the unit is based on an ESP32 chipset, it's a breeze to set up. Insert your fully charged 18650 battery. If you don't know the state of charge, then insert and plug in the USB cable into the main charging adapter. Open the Wi-Fi settings on your mobile phone. Connect the Wi-Fi access point to the PLT-1 battery. If this doesn't navigate to the home screen of the device, open Chrome on your device. I found that Safari didn't work. Navigate to 192.168.4.1. Now select your 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi access point. Enter your Wi-Fi password and press done. And that's it for the mobile side. Now switch to Home Assistant. You will notice that a new notification has appeared. Navigate to notifications. Press check it out. Your PLT-1 battery sensor will show up as an ESB home device. Press add. Now press submit. Optionally give it an area and press finish. Now let's look at the entities that are exposed. Press devices for the ESP home. Select your Apollo PLT-1B sensor. In controls, you can toggle the RGB LED and by long pressing, you can change the color and the intensity. In sensor data, you have the air humidity and the temperature, which are provided by an AsAir AHT20F sensor which can be tuned to offset for the ESP32 operating temperature in the configuration section. There is a battery level, which is a percentage and shown to two decimal places, and a battery voltage, which is shown to four decimal places. The accuracy of both will need to be tested over an extended period, but Apollo claims six months for a quality 18650 at optimal settings. Then you have a Lighton LTR390 sensor, which provides the Lux and UVI readings. Considering the case and exposure of the sensor to natural light from the side cut out from the case, I don't believe that this would be very accurate, but they will be able to give indicative measurements. And then you have the main star of the show, the soil moisture sensor. 
and if used in conjunction with the optional probe, you have the soil temperature. The PLT1 battery soil sensor runs on a large 18650 battery and connects via Wi-Fi, which is notorious for draining batteries. Hence why most such sensors run on Zigbee or Bluetooth. The sensor is rated at six months on a single charge. But to achieve this, you are going to need to configure the sensor to sip on power. Increasing the sleep duration is the most effective way to extend the battery life. The default sleep duration is 12 hours, but you can increase this further. Set the sleep duration to 24 hours once per day to significantly extend the battery life. Apollo suggests that changing the sleep cycle to wake once a day could potentially give you close to 12 months of battery life. And don't forget, you can always just plug it into a USB and leave it plugged in. But then again, why did you buy the battery variant? So how did the PLT1 battery perform? Well, compared to my EcoWit WH51, I found that they were within 5% of the soil moisture. Just remember that to obtain a maximum accuracy, it's recommended to calibrate the PLT1 battery sensor, link in the description. Also remember that this is only at the time of reporting, as I left the sleep time at every 12 hours. Since the WH51 doesn't have the ability to measure soil temperature, I was not able to confirm this measurement. However, the DS18B2 temperature probe has an accuracy of plus or minus 0.5 degrees Celsius, with a range from minus 10 to plus 85 degrees, so it should be super accurate. The PLT1 battery variant adds the flexibility of a battery power source to a very competent and capable soil moisture sensor. On the pro side, the PLT1 battery offers a lot of sensors that will keep your plant super happy and give you the ability to move away from your socket. On the con side, the case is a little larger than I would like, and although green, it's going to be visible unless you have a huge pot. So this is not an outside sensor, or at least not exposed to the elements. Also, the choice of Wi-Fi over Zigbee is an interesting one, considering the power drain of Wi-Fi and not really needing the speed of Wi-Fi. So if you're not into Zigbee or Bluetooth and need the additional sensors, then this is a great choice. But if you're looking for a cheap soil moisture sensor, then there are plenty of Zigbee and Bluetooth offerings on the market. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if I've helped you make a purchasing decision, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.